What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. This is sort of everything I've been up to uh, the week before Thanksgiving and leading up to it. There's, there has been a lot going on and I'm going to take you through all of that. Just a heads up, this isn't the most exciting episode. It's a lot of troubleshooting and a lot of just figuring out what's going on with this. And uh, quite frankly, it's a lot of me talking. So um, yeah, let's just get to it. Let me start in advance by saying that my neighbors are doing a mild construction project over there. They're something the builder didn't take care of when they built the house. But um, so I apologize for that. So I know it's been a while. It's been a long while and I apologize. Uh, chronologically, it's just been a week since a week or two since I filmed, since I dropped the last episode. Um, but by the time you guys see this, like a few weeks will pass and then thanks, we got Thanksgiving roaring up. So uh, let me give you a quick update about what I've been up to. Um, my partner, she had to go to Vegas for some business and uh, I spent some of that time camping, seeing some family in Oklahoma, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she came back for a week and um, so basically, yeah, had to get her settled in and didn't really, I don't really work on the project during the weekends. Um, she had to go back to England for some, some family business and that left me at home for a week uh, with, with not a whole lot to do. So I did what any boy did. Does. I spent too much time at the pub uh, watching the Rangers win the uh, the World Series. Hell yeah, brother. I watched a lot of American football, college and pro. And um, I spent a few days camping with my mom. So it got pretty chilly that night. I think it could drop down to like 35, 30, 35 or so, which isn't terrible. I've camped in much lower temperatures. But um, what happened was it, it blew, it, it gave me the flu. So I was like knocked out of commission. I thought I had COVID, honestly. I was knocked out of commission for about three days solid, maybe four. Uh, didn't really work on the project and then the weekend came around. So here I am back at it again. And let's let's bring you up to speed with where we're at. Cause I didn't really, I don't, I don't can't remember how much I touched on this in the last one. So what is the what is the truck doing? Basically the, the biggest, like from a drivability standpoint, the biggest problem is when I, um, when I press the throttle, um, and go from like, it idles at 750 when I try to jump it up to like 1500 or something. One, it goes a lot slower than I'm expecting. And, and I know that that, I don't, I don't know. So it, it behaves like it's got a really heavy flywheel and I don't really understand automatic transmissions, but that's that's basically what it's doing. It's like, it's revving up like it's got a diesel flywheel in it. Um, so it, once it hits that rev, it plummets down to like 350 RPMs and it gets kind of confused and slowly brings itself up. So I thought maybe it was a throttle position sensor and I ordered a new one from LC, AC Delco. You can hear it's now parked because it broke upon installation. So that could be part of it. It also could be the IAC. And this is just some cheap Amazon overseas crap that, um, that I ordered. So I think the first order of business is really to order a new IAC, uh, an AC, uh, like a, a GM IAC and throttle position sensor. So I think that may help some of that. The other problem is, and this is something I've been chasing since I've gotten the truck started, is the uh, the cam position sensor. I'm throwing an, an 0102, no, sorry, a uh, 0342 code for the cam position sensor. Um, there's a couple wire, a couple plugs back there in the back of the harness that look very similar. So, uh, and I tried both of them. I've, I've tried everything basically, and I've re you're like, yo, just replace the cam position sensor. Well, I did that. I replaced the cam, bought a brand new AC Delco uh, cam position sensor, put that in, plugged it all up, still throwing the code, tried both plugs, still throwing the code, re removed the, the new one, put the old one back in, still throwing the code. So the first order of business is go through and, and I'm going to take the Noid and the multimeter and figure out what the hell's going on with the wiring, make sure it goes back to the correct place on the, on the, uh, on the ECM. Um, so yeah, so, so that's, that's job number one. So that, that could, that could be affecting that idle. I think, um, the other one is I'm getting an 0102 math circuit low. I, I don't know why that's the case. Again, multimeter, noid light. I'm going to have to figure this out. So I'm going to have to unplug the computer and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I gotta try to figure that out. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what math does to the idle. If, if, if that affects it or if that just, uh, affects the fuel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I've been chasing since before, uh, since Liz, before Liz went to England, I've been chasing this 0353 coil C circuit 
low. I've replaced the coil with another, uh, with another, I have like two sets of coils here that came with the engine. Replaced it with another coil, um, no change. Um, I may just, <laughs> I may get another coil and try that and see, see if that produces a change. But um, I also need to see if I get spark in that thing or not. So I, I don't know. So that's the big troubleshooting. Um, the last big thing, which I just now solved, this had me hella worried, hella worried. Um, I was getting coolant coming out my exhaust on the passenger side, right out the header. So first of all, header lead there, um, which the bolt just wasn't tightened between the exhaust that I made and the, and the actual uh, log header man manifold. So um, started the car, got underneath, flashlight, watched it, and uh, thank God that wasn't the case. Um, it's coming out of a heater hose up at the top where it connects to the firewall. So I'm going to really, and I was hopeful for that. I was hopeful for that. And I don't want to get rid of the heater because I plan on taking this thing everywhere uh, up to including like Montana, Alaska, blah, blah, blah. So I need that heater to function properly. Um, so I'm going to get that, uh, get that tightened back down now so I can bleed the coolant system and try to get that going. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. It's, it's, I'm not going to drag the camera over there and show you guys. It's, it's kind of boring watching someone test things out with a multimeter, but yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at and I'll come back and report back what I find. Okay. Well, I found the culprit of the slow leak right here. So hopefully I have enough space and I'll just cut that inch and an eighth off and, uh, move on with my life but i am definitely going to switch to one of these worm style clamps i'm sure the internet hates them and thinks they're garbage and i should definitely be using like an bulkhead fittings but this is what i'm going to go with and i hope it gets better okay guys so it's a new day and um here's kind of where i'm at so i took it around the block a few times yesterday and the truck won't rev over 1600. Uh, hopefully you guys hopefully i remember to record it and you guys can see previously what it's doing so if i hold it steady um if i go up to 1600 if i surpass that 1600 and try to hold it it just bounces up and down up and down up and down and then it tries to die on me so um did a little bit of research on the internet and what the current theory is that it may be down to uh, anti-abuse mode. So it may be in anti-abuse mode. So the, the, the job today is I'm going to pull the ECM and um, send that back to the programmer to get that completely and utterly removed. And hopefully that fixes that part of the problem. Um, I'm still getting a P0342 um, error, which is the camshaft position sensor. And I'm looking through all this stuff in the internet and none of it's making sense. Switched it out, switched it back and forth. Right now the new one's in there um, and nothing seems to work, but there's a small little thread at the bottom of the internet um, in which someone found another, like what they're calling it a jumper harness. I don't know what the jumper harness is because there's nothing else to plug in on, the, on, the, uh, on my setup right now. But there is a spare, a spare sensor plug uh, that matches completely the cam sass position um, sensor plug. So if you remember in a previous episode or maybe even this episode, I, um, I, I tried both of them and that's how I, I thought I fixed it. But what I think's happening is I think the, the, the harness that I got on eBay is blending, blended the two. So um, when, I pull the when I pull the ECM out, I'm gonna go through and pin out each one of those. I thought I did that originally, but I'm gonna document it completely this time and see exactly um, what these wires go to, where they go to on the ECM for both the, the spare and the, um, the, the camshaft position sensor. Because what I think happened is I think the signal wire from the spare goes to the signal wire on the camshaft position sensor and that's what might be throwing the air. Um, the other thing is they were, on the internet they were talking about switching. There, there's, three, there's three wires, right? There's the, there's the power of the ground and the signal. Um, and I think, I think it actually, yeah. So there's a power ground and a signal. And what, um, what, like I said, what might be happening is the signal wire. Oh, they were saying that the A and the, the B and the C, so that it may need to be switched. So regardless, I'm going to do continuity um, throughout the harness on those two plugs, make sure that they match up to what the ECM is expecting and, um, and ship this, pull, ship this thing out to the program. And hopefully uh, after Thanksgiving, it'll, it'll, it'll be ready to run again. Um, I'm still getting other error codes. My, my map sensor, I'm, I looked, it looks like I cheaped out and bought a cheap map sensor and, and that, that thing's like basically exploding. Hold on, I'll show you. 
So here it is. I, don't, I, I can't tell if you can see this or not, but um, this part, you can see the bottom just popped right off and I super glued it back on and now the top just wants to pop off. So um, yeah, I'm gonna buy a real AC Delco and hopefully that fixes the problem. Um, let me show you something else. So when this plugs in, Right, and I, I, I plugged it in backwards intentionally because it wants to hit the firewall if I go the other way, and I really don't feel like trimming all this out. So, um, but you can see it's like really, it's banging on this piece. So I'm gonna sand this down. The other error, I didn't even realize this, but there was a plate that came over all of this that held the map sensor down. That's what keeps it from popping off, I guess, if there's boost. So I may have to fashion a bracket since I chopped this one off mistakenly. Well, not mistakenly, but it, it would have been useful. Um, I'm, I guess I'm gonna make a, a bracket that comes off of this and you know puts clamp pressure to hold this thing, to hold the map sensor down. So um, that'll be, yeah. So yeah, so I'm gonna have to do that bracket um, after after Thanksgiving. So what, what's going on is um, I'm gonna go camping for a couple of days and I gotta get, get all this stuff sorted out and shipped um, before I pack up and, and head out. So uh, yeah, it should be a good time. I know you saw this in previous episodes, but it's kind of sweet. This is how um, my little Aussie Doodle uh, spends her days watching the backyard while I work on the car it's nice all right guys so sorry this episode's taking so long to sort of manifest um it's just after thanksgiving so i went through that nuttiness i had my daughter in from college and everything so at any rate here's where we're at so prior to the holidays i um my computer my my engine wouldn't rev above 1600 so it would hit 1600 and then like drop to like 350 Oh, this crow, sorry. It would drop to 350 or 450, somewhere around there, and it would like slowly bring itself back to life to that 750 that I have the idle set at. Um, and everyone probably knows this. Everyone in the LS swap community probably already knows this, but it took me searching like to the dark back corner of the internet to find that in rare instances, and rare is my understanding, um, in rare instances, there's this thing called anti-abuse mode. And I don't know what sets it, what sets it off, or why my computer has it in there, and like a lot of other ones don't. But when that set, um, if set precisely to that 1600, it was behaving exactly the same way it was. So took like the, the week, sent it back to my programmer. Uh, he nulled out anything to do with the, um, the anti-abuse mode and took it around the block on uh, the, the Sunday after Thanksgiving and it, wrote, it drove fine. It went all the way up to the, two, I think I drove it up to 2,000 and RPMs and it, it felt really strong, it felt really good. None of that sputter, none of that weird idle crap that I was dealing with before, it felt, it felt per, fairly good, okay? What it wasn't doing is it wasn't shifting. It wasn't shifting out of fur, so I think I need to go put some more transmission fluid in there. So I'm gonna play with that a little bit. Um, the attempts were kind of coming up a bit too, and I don't think, I, if I remember, I didn't have my fan plugged in, so I need to plug my fan in. Uh, take it, drive it around a little bit and see, um, start, start, you know, ironing things out. All right, guys, so it's a new day and I apologize for this episode coming out so late. It's just been an awful lot of troubleshooting. So let me take you uh, sort of where I'm at right now. Okay, so this is, this is some of the problems I'm having right now. Um, up here, my map sensor, my map sensor isn't being held down. See those two threaded inserts right there? I need to make a, uh, a bracket that comes off of those and holds the actual sensor down. Um, you can see where there used to be one right underneath that white clip and I chopped it off in a previous episode. So um, yeah, that's unfortunate, but it's whatever. So I'm gonna make that bracket today. Um, but the biggest, the bigger issue I have is right in here, right? So see that how that belt just wants to keep jumping off and you can see right in here why that little idler is trying to do this. So what I may do is I may try to reroute it um, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Alrighty, so so you guys saw that the belt issue. Um, one of the things I think I'm going to try to do is the Facebook group uh, had some rerouting techniques, and they had some uh, an additional idler pulley where there was a rip pulley. Um, and I just so happened to have this one off of the power steering bracket of the GM. So I think I'm going to try to replace that, uh, reroute the 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 belt. I mean that belt's toast, but I, it's also I think it's going to be too long. So I'm going to give this a give this a shot and just see what happens i mean it's not too hard to reroute um 
belts and things like that. Um, and then, then the, the last thing I want to accomplish is I need to, I think the, the crank position sensor uh, from the disco side is a little bit off that reluctor wheel. And what's happening is it's basically, it hits 2000 RPMs and then the gearbox won't upshift, right? It also doesn't like to kick down, but I mean, I'm starting off at first, I'm just driving around my neighborhood. It's got a 25, 30 mile an hour speed limit. So I'm just kind of going around, making sure that everything, like the, the water cycling on, the fan cycling, all that stuff. But um, I, need to, I, need to, I need to get that done. And I think it has to do with the crank position sensor. And the reason why is I got M&S lights going. I've got, um, you know, the traction control, the, the ABS lights on, you know, I shift it into gear and I get the flashing light on the, the drive, um, you know, putting it into drive. I can't shift it into any of the lower gears um, because of that flashing light. So I, I need to get rid of that. Those, I need to get all those, those safety lights off. Um, so yeah, so today, uh, math bracket or math bracket, um, belt rerouting, and then I'm going to move that crank position sensor a little bit closer. That 16 thou is tight. That's like, that's less than a half a millimeter. So that seems shocking. And I think I'm about one millimeter right now. I might be a little closer, but I just need to make some adjustments. The challenge is it's a little grim outside right now. So I kind of want it to dry up before I go into there and start messing with anything. Um, so yeah, I want to accomplish those three things and then I'm not going camping anytime soon. So I need to clean up my camp stuff and get this whole area cleaned up. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna get rid of this table, clean this up. My girlfriend has been nagging on me to tidy up the, uh, the garage for quite a while now. So I'm gonna probably get that done and uh, I'll try to film as much of it as I can. So here's the plan. Um, again, there's those two brackets. You can see that that's not level. It slants down to the back, but um, I might be able to put some like, it needs to hold it the, the map down, I believe. <laughs> I don't even know. If someone knows, let me know. But um, yeah, so I think I'm just gonna make a, well, it's gonna be a penis shaped uh, little piece that holds everything down. So let's get to making that.
I thought this was going to happen, but you can see the center line's a little bit off. So I think I'm just going to try to shave this down with the sander to make it more even. It's probably fine. Functionally, it's fine. I just... I just don't want to be embarrassed if I ever open the thing up and someone's like, yo, that's off a little bit. Like, yeah, I know, bro. <laughs> it sucks, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I offered it up and you really can't tell. Um, so I'm just gonna go with it. I can route this either under here or under here. I kind of like this better because it's a little bit out of the way, but um, yeah, let's just get this cinched down. Okay, I have it cinched down. Let's see if you can see from this angle. You can see it's not really touching. So I think I'm gonna put like a little piece of foam or something under there to uh, to hold it down so that it has some vibrate so it has some vibration dampening and stuff. But yeah, that should work. Okay, let's see if I can show you what I got here. So basically, this needs to come down about probably about a quarter of an inch. I could bend this down. Right, so it could like basically do like a semi Z drop down and then bend this the opposite direction. That would hold it down tight. But I got these weird pads um, with my electric fan. So I could just double, double up on these to hold it down. I'll probably, well, since I have enough, I'll probably try that first and then um, see if it works. If it, if it doesn't work, then I'll take it off and try the bending method. But if I just double these down, it creates almost a quarter of an inch and it's kind of springy. So let's see how that works. Okay guys, so I got the belt fixed. It's 101, no, it's 105 eight. And I'm not running that lower pulley down there. It seems to be working just fine. It's hella tight. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up and then I'll, I'll bring you guys in and uh, take you through the last of it. All right, that's it, guys. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of brought you up to speed. Um, what I didn't really show, I'll show you a little bit of this now, is I took the, the Disco for the first time off of like a square mile that I've been testing and driving uh, around the neighborhood uh, about 25, 30 minutes away to a campsite. So I did a couple days, I uh, did a night camping, got the dogs out. I don't even think you've seen this dog. This is, uh, this is my Aussie that unfortunately my partner is, she's really, really allergic um, to dogs. That's why we have to get the one with the doodle mixed into it. But um, it's nice to be able to get them out and uh, I get to take her camping and stuff, you know, at least once a month. But yeah, the disco did all right um, until I checked the error codes and there's just a lot that came back, right? So I solved the crank position sensor issue, got the MNS lights to go off, still have the three amigos um, and I'm getting, just weird error codes. Uh, the, the, the map sensor's still not right. I'm just getting a coil bank two error. Uh, even though I changed out the coil, I, I've tried three different coils in that location. Didn't change a thing. Even changed out the harness, because I had a spare har uh, coil harness. Didn't change anything. So what I think, uh, let, let's see what else is it. It's, yeah, it's the map, TPS, um, in that that coil too those are those are the those are big error codes that are going up but they're the really alarming one and i found all this out when i got to the campsite and i uh scanned the, the ecm is it's not seeing the o2 sensors um out the back so i'm not quite sure what's up with that maybe i got i don't know maybe i got a two wire and needed a four wire although it plugged in just fine so um there's gonna be some troubleshooting to to figure that out because uh, i badly want to get this to a point where i can take it to get it inspected at that point it's it's fully legal to drive around on the road and stuff so um so yeah that that's where we're at i appreciate you watching this um i have an exciting episode coming up i got a bunch of parts ordered so there's gonna be some new content 
uh, coming up. Uh, I'll film this uh, in a couple days. So yeah, stick around. Please guys, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe. Hit that bell so you get the notification. And by all means, please like this. The logarithm is really beating me up. So want to get that sorted out. Thanks a lot guys.